Hey, what is going on, everybody? Jerma here with a Team Fortress 2 gameplay commentary. And tonight, I'm going to be playing as the Pyro, the Backburner Pyro, which is something I don't think I have ever done, at least on the channel. I have played Backburner Pyro before. Uh, maybe I've done it on a live stream or something like that, maybe on a, a face cam fortress or something, but I've never done a sit-down post-commentary on this item and talking about tips and strategies and stuff like that because there are a few things you should know before you equip this thing. First of all, we're going to go over, there's probably one or two, maybe three things you should know about this item, but the most important one is this is not a flamethrower for you to charge at somebody in their face. That's not what this thing is designed for. You're not supposed to just barrel ass into people and light them on fire because of course if you take a look at the other flamethrowers which have a way more cost efficient compression blast this thing takes 50 ammo to do it one time which means you can only do this four times before you're totally out of ammo so you don't you're not supposed to air blast with this thing only in extreme emergency situations are you supposed to right click with this thing out but the other flamethrowers they're designed to pop people in the air, shoot them with the flare gun. They're designed to knock people around and to charge at people head on. Now, of course, you can just charge at people holding the mouse button down with this thing and do a substantial amount of damage. You can do that with all the flamethrowers, but you got to remember, this thing is not the WM1 weapon anymore because they took away the damage bonus it had. Remember, this thing got brought down to be in line with the stock flamethrower. They brought the stock flamethrower up and they brought this thing down. And this thing also, just like the Flogistinator now, never used to have a compression blast. They added that in a patch a couple years ago. So it, ha it had a very bad reputation when it first came out. But I think now, I mean, the guaranteed crits from behind are very powerful still, as you're seeing in this video. It's incredibly powerful, but it has to be used in the right way. Like I said, you cannot just charge at people anymore. You have to use the back burner as if you were a spy. You have to play Backburner Pyro as if you are a spy with no disguises. Because it's pretty much the exact same thing. You're going to insta-kill people from behind with this thing. It's going to take you less than two seconds, less than one second in a lot of cases, to get a Backburner kill from behind. So you have to utilize that. you got to start hiding. you got to start playing the patient game. You've got to start doing ambush tactics. And there is one case in this video I actually die only one time in this video. And it's when I do not use one of those tactics. I run straight into a heavy, and he blows me away. That's just how it is. You have to remember to utilize the ambush and the hiding tactics, especially on an open map like Lakeside, or any of the King of the Hill maps, or even on the payload. Backburner Pyro on payload is potentially insane. If you just sit there and hide around a corner where nobody can see you and watch the cart kind of trail in front of you with five dudes on it, You'll, you'll kill at least a few of them. It, that's, it's, it might be seen as suicide pyro, but still, you can cause a lot of damage with this thing. And another tip, or another tactic, I guess this is a general pyro strategy, but it's mostly a backburner strategy, and I guess it's, it's a spy strategy too, because we're talking about backburner pyro, but that's stay out of people's FOV. Stay out of people's field of view. If you can look at your screen, right? This is a good little uh, tactic and little thing to practice. Stay in spawn for a second. Stand in spawn and look straight ahead. Now try to keep a mental note of how far to the left and how far to the right you can see. Because those are your blind spots. Right after that ends on the left or ends on the right, those are your blind spots and people can just walk right over there and you'll never see them. So try to keep a mental note of those things and use them to your advantage. It's actually another good uh, piece of evidence to use a higher FOV rather than the default or a lower FOV. When you change your field of view, you get to see more of the battlefield and more of your peripheral vision. So I highly suggest if you don't have it done, throw up a higher FOV somewhere around 90. And it's going to be odd at first. It's going to seem a little awkward at first, like you're looking through a tunnel. But you will get used to it and it'll make your gameplay a lot better in the long run. Speaking from personal experience, I had my Team Fortress 2 FOV set to the default for about four and a half years. And I it was only about a year and a half ago when I finally decided I was going to try it, and I will never go back. Every FPS I ever play, at least on PC, is always going to be at at least 90 FOV. At least 85, 80 to 90, because it, it is night and day, guys. If you get used to it, you will see a huge freaking difference. 
So that's going to wrap up the video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, this quick little pyro game on Lakeside. And uh, I'll see you guys all next time. And of course, take care, everybody.